Hello Washington, this is Blue Jay Journal TV. John and I are your hosts for this episode. Let's take a look at what's coming up. We are going to learn more about two local moms who have created two organizations that give back in big ways. Also, we are going to learn more about a sport that has taken Washington High School by storm. Those stories and much more are coming up. Blue Jay Journal TV starts right now. Cancer, it's a word no one wants to hear. The disease is often treated with chemotherapy. But those treatments will often leave patients physically and emotionally drained. And it's no big secret that cancer patients will lose their hair in the process. That's why some people will shave their heads to show support and raise money to fight the disease. Autumn Osha has the details on our top story. I met my husband 10 years ago, but we were married in May of 2013. Christy and Cliff's marriage didn't just unify them, it unified their families as well. My family now is six of us. Uh, they're absolutely beautiful. Our family is a little crazy. Everybody has a lot of fun. The thing that impacted me most is just falling in love with them and them returning it. Just building that extra bond, knowing that someone's going to be there for them and have two more kids to love like my own. I think she's awesome. She likes to let us do some of the things that we love to do. She's a wonderful mother. She has been strong, especially if anybody else in the family is weak. Christy's strength has improved the Gossage family, but their strength was tested when they found out their son had cancer. So Zach was diagnosed in 2013. Um, it was probably one of the hardest times in my entire life. I don't think I've ever felt so helpless, you know, having to take a step back and say, you know, I, I can't really voice my feelings or opinion, but I can most definitely feel it. Heartbroken, Christy used the strength she found in her new family to get through it. The biggest help emotionally would be my husband um, and that we pulled together as opposed to pull apart. Together they decided to turn this devastation into something to help others. St. Baldrick's is a lot of people shaving their heads in solidarity to be able to raise money for childhood cancer research. That's why I'm kind of bald. So my second year was this year, but our family has been shaving since Zach was diagnosed. The Gossage family experienced great joy when their son Zach overcame cancer, but they still work to raise money to help kids with cancer. It will make a difference, and we're not going to quit. For more information on St. Baldrick's, you can visit their website www.stbaldrick's.org. You can also follow Zach's journey at We Got Your Back Zach on Facebook. For Blue Jay Journal, I am Autumn Osha reporting. If you look at the flyers in the halls of Washington High School, you'll notice one for a new club called Youth Alive. Let's learn more. <laughs> we kind of like the co-founders of it and we decided we just started a little club that if people want to come and know or just talk about problems or like solutions, then it's a place we can find it. Youth Alive is a Christian club here at Washington High School founded by Hannah Simons. We kind of just talked to our youth pastor, Dylan, and he fully, fully encouraged us. And so we went to a teacher because you have to find a sponsor. And so that's Mrs. Suggs, and she was so happy about it. At the beginning of the year, some students who I do not know, they were not my students, came to me and asked would I uh, mind sponsoring a club called Youth Alive, Bible study led by students. Youth Alive has also brought sisters Hannah and Sarah Simons together through studying God's Word. Both of us kind of have, like, have that passion to like, uh, have a close relationship with God and we can kind of just like support each other through that. Mm -hmm. Free to say what you think and like how you view it and then that's just where you grow like a sibling. You start off with one of us leading a message or a sermon and that will maybe last 15 minutes and then we'll just have like talking time where we can discuss the subject and then there's always prayer at the end and then we talk some more because we like to talk. <laughs> It's not like a harsh environment, so being open with them, being like, yeah, I struggle a lot, you struggle a lot, hey, be friends. I would encourage you, like, even if you're not a believer or you don't have a religion or you just want there because, like, my youth pastor brings bagels, like, just... <laughs> it's not like you already have to be, like, a super close Christian. You can just go, like, once, and that's already, like, something you can think about, and you can, like, come again if you want, but 
it's no way oppressive or ever going to force you to. We're always really open. Youth Alive meets every Wednesday morning at 7.50 in Mrs. Sugg's room. Everyone is invited to attend. This is Jaden Hine reporting for Blue Jay Journal TV. Sometimes it's easy to get wrapped up in our daily lives and forget about people in our world who are in need of the things we take for granted. However, one local mom decided to step outside her comfort zone and do something to help others. Ghana. It is 5,890 miles away from Washington. But thanks to Care for Ghana, it is never far from Dana Heinzelman's heart. I am a registered nurse, first assistant at the hospital here in Washington. Me and a couple of other nurses, along with some surgeons, decided we would go to Ghana, Africa to do surgeries. Our first trip was in 2013. We usually go like every other year. Preparing for missions to Ghana became much easier for Dana after the first trip, and it became a family affair. After that trip, the subsequent trips, we pretty much knew what we wanted, so we could kind of weed through it a little bit. We get donations from all over Mercy, Barnes. Every year we do a trivia night. Everybody, like especially at the hospital, a lot of people come to that. With the trivia nights and the doc stock, I definitely am sure that I'm there and help bring whoever I need to bring to help volunteer and make it work. Thanks to fundraisers, donations, and the work of the Heinzelman family, Doctors and nurses are able to provide surgeries for people in need. On our first trip, one of our first procedures we did, a boy and a girl, and they had typhoid. With that, it affects their small bowel. It puts little pinholes in it. Normally, they just don't do anything with them. But we went in and we stapled them, and they, they did pretty good. Because of the doctors and nurses' work in Ghana, they are able to save many lives. If we weren't here, what would, what would you do with them? And they were like, well, they would just probably die eventually. These trips don't just affect people in Ghana. They also have a lasting impact on those involved back home. If you have anybody in your family that's going on mission trips and stuff, it can be really impacting because they come back with all these stories. Where I stand, I just want to do anything I can to help. At 15, I can't go over there and help do surgery. And being here at home, helping her get supplies together and helping with the fundraisers, it just it makes you feel like you're part of something bigger than just Washington. For more information about donating and fundraising for Care for Ghana, they can go to our website, the Care for Ghana website. There's a link on there to donate. For Blue Jay Journal TV, I am Ellie Shear reporting. There's a new sport taking Washington High School by storm. It's called spike ball. I had the honor to sit down with three athletes who are increasing spike ball's popularity. Let's learn more about them and spike ball. Hi, I'm Dylan Mercado. Hi, I'm Adam Guzzi. Hi, I'm Joe Omer. And, and we, we play, play spike, spike ball. ball. That's good. There's a new sensation sweeping Washington High School. The sensation of spike ball. Spike ball, it's not a game, it's a philosophy. <laughs> it's a way it's a way of, <laughs> it's a way life. of life. It's a way of <laughs> life. <laughs> Three WHS seniors, Dylan Mercado, Adam Guzzi, and Joe Omer, have been caught up in the craze. I would say that it's really similar to two-on-two -two volleyball, except instead of the ball traveling over the net to change possessions, you hit it onto a circular net, and that signals kind of like the change of possession between teams. Originally, we played it at Connor and Austin Lewis's farm, and from there, we just fell in love with the game, and we've been getting everyone else addicted. I first got introduced into spike ball uh, through wrestling. At tournaments, people are always hitting balls off nets. Never really got it. Then I uh, tried it out, and it turns out it's a blast. Spike ball's popularity has continued to grow throughout WHS. And it originated with wrestling, but it started getting picked up by like the basketball team and the brain bowl kids, and it's grown to be a big part of WHS. The increase in interest around spike ball led to the establishment of several tournaments. Basically what happens with the tournaments, we just pick a day, it's usually a weekend. Come out, see how, how many people come out, set up the bracket, usually go from pool play into bracket play, and it's just a fun time. So if any of you are interested in getting into the two-on-two -two spike ball tournaments on weekends, please contact me or Joe Omer, and we'll get you guys set up, get you the date and everything, and we're always willing to teach new players. Spike ball's a great time because it's super easy, all you need is the net and a flat area. And uh, it's just real fun. It's fun. You can you can dive around, you know, make some stellar plays, get that agility up, you know, and just uh, just dominate people. Honestly, for Blue Jay Journal TV, I am Jonathan Amlong reporting. Spike ball. Can you dig it? <laughs> 
We want to thank you for watching our show. That's right. John and I are glad you joined us. Until next time, catch us online at www.bluejayjournal.com. Have a great day.